Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 151 of the Immigration Lawyers Podcast. Thanks for joining us today. We have a, a really good guest today. It's very interesting stuff. We have Jared Jastod. Uh, not only is he an immigration lawyer, but he's a tech entrepreneur creating bots that allow clients to want to communicate with you in off hours or apps, or sometimes if you have a lot of people contacting you online, he has this bot he's created for immigration lawyers that responds and kind of uh, does the initial uh, process for you. I'll let him talk about it during the interview, but I wanted to share that after the interview, we got to talking and he said, you know, for listeners of the Immigration Lawyers Podcast who want to try out his Immigration Lawyer bot, uh, he will give a 60-day free trial. Just mention the Immigration Lawyers Toolbox, let him know that you heard about it from here, and you'll get a a two-month trial. So that's really special. I wanted to share that with you. And also, uh, you know, I've been doing individual coaching and training in the immigration sphere as the champions, as part of the Champions for Freedom program I talked about before, which is uh, essentially breaking down how to start an immigration law firm, doing marriage kind of cases, family kind of cases from the beginning to end. I've been doing it individually, but I want to create a, a course that's group, so you log in and, and watch a video live at a certain time. So I'm setting that up, and I want to let you know if you're interested in that, having a course that breaks down how I do. Uh, my practice of a marriage case, fiance case, CR1, K1, along with the next steps, constant processing, adjustment status, and admissibility, removal of conditions, I-90 renewals, and the basics of NATS and all this kind of stuff, um, please email me at info at immigrationlawyerstoolbox.com for more information, info at immigrationlawyerstoolbox.com. And along with that program comes a certain amount of time of premium membership to the toolbox. And for those who don't need that intense training, but want to get all the CLE type education we have about L1s, about the mastermind marketing corner, you know, O1s, uh, you know, starting all the different kind of CLEs, go to immigrationlawyerstoolbox.com to see what stuff's there. And every week uh, a deep library is being added. Just check that out. And best thing to do is just email me again at info at immigrationlawyerstoolbox.com. That's lawyers, it's plural S. And with that, let's get it started. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us on this podcast. You have a great guest today, a uh, really innovator uh, in, in immigration tech, and tech in general for, for lawyers, I guess, but specifically because he's also an immigration attorney. Jerry Jascott, thank you for joining us today. And I and I should know, is it Jascott or Jask? Jascott's fine, yeah. Oh, perfect, They're right. <laughs> so Jerry's a fellow immigration attorney, also does immigration tech. We'll talk all about it in a second. But bots is essentially the key term right there. Jerry, thanks for joining us. Could you let us know about your background? Yeah, totally. So um, I started actually as a criminal defense attorney. I was a public defender early in my career. And um, when I became a private attorney after be- working for the government for five years, I really, I speak Spanish. I served in the Peace Corps in El Salvador. And so when I became a private attorney, I really started to connect with the Central American immigrant population here in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, you know, despite what people, what our president says, immigrants actually rarely commit crimes, but they were constantly asking me about their immigration cases. So I was like, you know, after a while, I was just like, you know, I really, I need to figure out how to help these folks with their immigration. And so I started really kind of studying immigration and seeing how I can make an impact there. So my firm, we started doing special immigrant juvenile status cases. And those cases were a really nice fit for us because they have a really big state law component. And that's kind of what we already knew. And so we built from there and then we started doing U visas. And then because of the group we were serving, we started getting a ton of asylum cases. We started working on those and we've sort of just gone case type by case type, Mm -hmm. really focusing on that Central American immigrant population and sort of serving their needs. And what does the structure of your firm look like now? Is it just you or do you have associates and partners? Yeah, so I have, you know, I used to have a part, I've I've had two partners right now. I have a a partner. of my third partner. So that's kind of a fun part of the journey. And it's uh, my partner and I, and we have three associates um, and five other support staff. Oh, you're keeping busy. So a good amount of volume to hire that many attorneys. For immigration, that's huge to have that many lawyers working in a firm. For non-immigration lawyers, it's like, that's small. For us, that's big. That's true. It's, it is a strange environment. I think, I mean, I wonder of the people you speak to. I. It seems like immigration firms are, are almost mostly solos. Yeah, they're solo or they have an associate here or they give a little bit of work there. Um, most of the business immigration firms are the ones that get bigger that I've seen uh, because a lot of them will hire one or two lawyer and then have 10 assistants or paralegals too to do a lot of work. So they could hire attorneys, but I mean, financially, it doesn't make sense a lot of times when they, they, could, they could farm it out like that. But I've seen is that even the big, big firms now 
are farming out their work overseas even to do a lot of the work uh, to save money. Uh, so it's, it's very interesting dynamic that's happening uh, in the immigration field. Uh, it, there's, just, there's so much going on. But I mean, speaking out of these interesting dynamics, so uh, the, the main reason I want to have you on is because you uh, are bringing something new to the field. Uh, we all get the same questions every day a million times. When is the embassy going to open? How long does my taste, case take? And I, you know, all this kind of stuff. And you found a, a solution of sorts for that. Could you talk about it? Yeah, that's absolutely right. It's a, the same question problem. It's totally, it's like all immigration lawyers have it. Uh, and so for me, what I really came from was that I was, I was volunteering on Fridays at a local nonprofit that serves immigrants. And I was doing free consults, something that a lot of immigration would never do free consults. So I was over there doing free consults. And this Friday consult started to get super popular. And it was like, there was like a week's long waiting list. And then all these people would show up and they would wait for hours to talk to me. And then I was like, you know, why is this happening? I'm just asking them all the same questions over and over again. Like, how can I get rid of this having to take a day off work, wait around? There has to be a way that I can automate this. And so I really started looking around for different solutions. And I came across this technology called chatbots which was really not very well known in 2016. Now I think that there's a lot more popularity. People have Alexa at home. A lot of people talk to Siri on their iPhone. And so I started to try to create this chatbot immigration attorney that could do a free consult. And that was sort of the beginning of my journey of, of trying to figure out that question. A lot of my early efforts, to be honest, John, were terrible. People hated talking to my first chatbots. Yeah. But I was able to learn from the experience and start to come up with some bots that actually started to move the needle a little bit. What was it that turned people off from the initial iteration of it to the, to the current one? Yeah, so I, what I really did in the beginning is that I was really creating sort of what I would call greedy chat bots. And what that means is that when people would come in, the bot would be like, hey, what's your name? What's your immigration status? Are you married? When did you come into the country? And people were kind of like, whoa, like, what is this? Like, this is some kind of like, Automated technology. I don't even know who you are. I had it tied to a brand called Yo Tengo Un Abogado. So they're like this random like little machine is trying to get all this personal information from me. What a turnoff. And for those who don't speak Spanish, Yo Tengo Abogado means I am an, I'm an attorney? I have an attorney, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I thought at the beginning like my big thesis was like if I can qualify people for some immigration relief, they're going to be super thankful and they're also going to be like, okay, well, if I'm qualified, I do want to talk to an attorney because for me, this big gap that I see with people is like over here, you have these immigration attorneys saying, I will not talk to you one second unless you prepay the consult. Mm -hmm. And over here, you have these people who are like, man, I've never had a lawyer before. I want to make sure that this is worth my time and money. Mm -hmm. And so how can we like bridge this gap? We have these two people sitting in either corner and they really both want to dance with each other. And so how can we bring them together? And the bot really giving them that little, you do qualify. I thought that that would be, that that would sort of be the ultimate connection, but we couldn't get the you do qualify without all those super personal questions. And, and that's kind of how I started it. But then, you know, when I realized people didn't like that. And then the crazy thing, John, is even after they answered all the questions, the few people that did, they didn't trust the bot. They're like, you're not a lawyer. You're just like a, some little AI. Like, why would I trust your legal conclusions? Yeah. Interesting. So how, what did you, what was the pivot that you did? What were the next steps to fix that? Yeah. So I mean, pivot number one was I, I brought it into my law firm and I connected it to me. Instead of Yo Tango and Abogado, it's like, hey, I'm a bot that works for Jared Jaska, an immigration attorney. Mm -hmm. So that began to give the bot, imbue the bot with a little bit of the confidence that an attorney actually gives. The second thing is that I really dialed down the expectations for what the bot could achieve. And so instead of a legal conclusion, instead it was really like, let's stay at the top here. What can the bot get done? without without really asking all these questions and then the final thing was actually it's, it's crazy that it took me so long to think of it but it was actually just about connecting with another human being by asking them so what can i do for you and then responding to that rather than um trying to sort of like assume that they wanted this legal conclusion and just coming at them with all these yeah. questions and what uh how hard is it to you know take a regular person speaking 
which might have typos and grammatical errors, all that kind of stuff, and absorb that into a bot? How, how does the computer handle that? This is a great question, John. You know, you've really put your finger on the hardest part of the whole thing. And, that, and what that really looks like if you open it up, you're right, is the people come in, and I'm sure you see it because you get a lot of people that send you messages on Facebook and, and WhatsApp. And they love to come in and just drop that big paragraph on you. Hey, I'm from Iran. I became a U.S. citizen in 2005. I've been engaged for the last nine years to my wife who lives in Afghanistan. We met on the Internet. She came here illegally one time in 2004. What can be done? And it's like, whoa, that's so much information. So, I mean, that is how it goes. And so, I mean, what we do is we use a, pro a technology called natural language processing. And what that really is, is, you know, you're taking all that data that's coming in and you're really trying to sort of draw things out of it. Like, okay, we have a U.S. citizen husband who's attempting to apply, apply for his wife. They're giving us their entry dates. I don't know if you, do you remember when IBM Watson won Jeopardy? Yeah. Yeah. So we use that same Watson. It's gotten a lot of upgrades over the years, but we're plugged into that same Watson. And so we throw those, those things that people tell us at IBM and they break them up for us using Watson. And then based on sort of the variables that shoot out of that, we're able to determine the next thing that the bot says. Very interesting. So uh, how does it look like right now? What is, uh, you know, what apps and stuff does the program work on and just some, some statistics or just how, how is it working out? Yeah, great. So, it, you know, it's, it speaks English and Spanish, but most of the time right now it, it, mo it mainly speaks Spanish. Right? Spanish speakers are the largest immigrant group in the United States, and certainly we see that in our bots. It's available primarily, it talks to people on Facebook Messenger. Mm -hmm. That's the number one medium that we see people coming in on because most of our customers are Facebook influencers, people that have really high volume and audience counts, yeah. a lot of video views. They do a lot of Facebook lives. We also have a bot that's just launched on YouTube. We're really excited about it. It's a lot more difficult technologically, but we think that YouTube is actually ultimately going to be a lot bigger than Messenger. So like when people leave comments on YouTube, it responds? No, no. So when oh, we, it would be like you would use at the end of your YouTube video, you would give them a call to action to message you on WhatsApp. Oh, I see. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, WhatsApp, the ones, so Facebook Messenger works on, works within WhatsApp as well. Yeah. So it's available. The bot basically can talk to people on your Facebook page or on your WhatsApp page now. Oh, very interesting. Yeah. And uh, what kind of results? And I, I remember seeing a post on LinkedIn that you had this uh, one immigration issue, the woman who does like, she's like massive on the internet. She, I mean, she has like 100,000 plus followers and stuff. I use this. It, I, I bet when you have that many followers, because I have like, I just said 3,000 on YouTube and I'm just getting like tons of like the same question over again. When does the embassy open? When is that? Uh, I can only imagine if you have 100,000 plus followers, you're just nonstop getting messages. And so you really need something like this. Yeah, we were really lucky in February when Katia Pereira decided to take a risk on us. She already had a bot, actually, that she had made herself on ManyChat. And so I had been talking to her for a long time about how, how much, you know, I, my bot could beat her bot. And if she would plug it in, it would really give her a big performance. And so she really took a risk on us. And we owe her so much because, you know, getting to have our bot operating for her firm is just such a big leap forward for us in terms of seeing all those conversations. Her bot averages somewhere in the range of 250 to 300 conversations a day. Wow. Yeah. And so when we plugged our bot in for her, we were really able to see um, a big gain. So, I mean, I think for her, the, the two biggest things that really kind of leapt her forward were the first thing is that our bot, her bot was getting like about half a percent of the people that talked to it would give it their phone number. Mm -hmm. And then our bot actually was able to get 20% of the people that talked to it. And so, I mean, right there, you know, we gave her that sort of, it, it ended up being 28 times more phone numbers per, per conversation. And so that, you know, just shot up the number of inquiries at her firm. Mm -hmm. But then the other thing that we did for her is that she doesn't want asylum cases and she doesn't want cases that are in immigration court. Actually, her practice is very similar to yours in that way. Oh, interesting. 
And so what that did for her by, by kind of kicking those people out, not letting them make a consult, is that it took her conversion rate from consult to client from 25% to 75%. Because wow. she was spending her time before talking to a bunch of people that she never really wanted to sign in the first place. Mm -hmm. And the bot, by filtering in that way, really allowed her to make sure she was in front of people that were super high quality opportunities for her. That's incredible. Now, I imagine you'll just need the bot if you have a massive audience like this. I mean, everyone's getting the email inquiries or they get hits on their website. Um, does the bot work on the website as well? If someone pops up, that kind of uh, chat bot kind of thing, could you do that too? We have a button that you can put on your website and it basically, when they click it, it spins up and shows them Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. And then they can use that to go through to your, to your messaging app bot that you have. And the reason for that actually, John, is that it has to do with consumer behavior. So, I mean, if you're on a website and you chat with it a little and then you surf away, you're gone. That company doesn't have any chance to talk to you. Yeah. But if, you, if your firm has a nice connection made with a client on Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp, that's a place that they're going to come back to. And it allows us to really, you know, kind of have that line of communication with them locked in. You know, it's funny you say that. Sometimes I'll be talking to technical support for some websites uh, for my login's not working or something, and I actually close the window, and it just shuts down the conversation. It's over. And then I have to redo it, wait for someone to come. And, and I was like, yeah, if it stays with you like that, that makes total sense. That's to just keep it like that. It's, it's better that way. They keep them within the system. So, I mean, how do you balance having a, a law firm, a full law firm, and uh, having a, a company? Uh, how much time is spent? And are you going in the direction of just focusing on the bot? Or how, how do things look in the future for you? Yeah, it's super hard. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I definitely don't do any more casework in my law firm. I'll still talk to my coworkers about their cases and strategies and ideas, mm -hmm. but I don't have any cases anymore that I'm directly responsible for. So for me now in the law firm, I'm really about making content, connecting with clients and, and really doing that rainmaking and working on the business, making sure that the law firm itself is, is, running well, mm -hmm. but I don't do casework anymore. And so that really gave me an opportunity to um, turn down the, the amount of work that I did in the law firm. And now I spend a lot more time um, really working with the team that's building the bot to try to keep the product moving along. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm also in charge of sales and support. So it's just, it's a lot, but I, I think that I'm going to be able to announce in the next couple of weeks, a uh, seed round investment that, we're going to get a check that's going to allow us to hire a full-time salesperson. So that should give me a little bit of relief. Fun. Wonderful. How was the transition going from working on cases to working on the firm? Uh, was that hard to, to leave, you know, the direct handholding of, I mean, you are, you are still giving behind the scenes strategy and guidance, but how was it to kind of distance yourself uh, from the active operations of the firm on, on the ground floor like that? I loved it. I mean, I'm sorry. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. It's a, it, yeah, it, it's good. <laughs> I sometimes feel like I wish someone else could do some of this work, but especially when it gets overwhelming, too much stuff at once. Yeah. No, I mean, I think, you know, the other thing about immigration law, especially right now is that it's so complex. It's really hard to make sure that you're just know everything about every PSG in your typical asylum case and, and make sure that you really are following the case law and SIJS in the state of Maryland. And so to sort of let go of those things and trust other talented attorneys that can really focus on that, I think ended up getting better results for my clients and, and taking that stress off my shoulders and let me focus on, you know, really that natural language processing and some of those other technological advancements that you were asking me about earlier. That's just not, at least for me, it's not possible to stay at the top of my game as a trial attorney and and understanding technology at this level how does the hiring process look for you uh is it kind of have, the people you hire do you have a system or it kind of just worked out that they're good and you brought them on board in, in the law firm yeah well i i think for us it's really about looking at um what we need in that moment for each particular role i mean the most recent hires that we made um I really wanted someone to help me out with consults because what I had found in the firm is that as I was doing more and more bot work, I actually was only willing to do a certain number of consults per week. Yeah. And that was starting to be kind of a bottleneck for the law firm because 
you know, we had more inquiries and people that would have liked to have spoken to us, but because I didn't want to do them, they were, they were going other places. Mm -hmm. And so I realized that if we could bring another attorney in to do consults, that that would really help us, um, you know, get our throttle open back up and not be, um, not be slowing down really because of my limitations. And so in that particular case, you know, I was like, who do we need to do consults? We needed someone that was really experienced that people would really trust that knew how to talk to people that knew sales, right? Because in that particular role, sales is a really critical thing. You can't be afraid to ask people for money to talk yeah. to them about terms. And so in that case, we just got really lucky and we actually got an attorney that was slowly winding down her firm of 35 years. She wanted to work part time. Mm. So coming to an, into a firm like ours that could give her, you know, a high hourly rate, and, and really value her skills, but also not give her the pressure of running a firm turned out perfect in that case. Okay. Yeah. That, that's the thing. Like, how do you find this perfect candidate that has these kind of skills and would work at a different firm? Uh, someone's winding down is perfect. Plus they come with that age of experience. So even uh, it helps out much more when someone sits down with them. I think, I mean, for us, the other big thing that's really been a huge addition in, in hiring is that we're a really a mission based law firm our willingness to work with a poorer population. We, mm -hmm. I mean, almost all our clients are on monthly payments. Um, most of them, a lot of them make less than 20,000 a year. We work with a lot of single moms. We're helping kids, asylum, crime victims with the U visa. There's a certain type of person that really puts a lot of value into working for a law firm that's doing that kind of thing. And so that really helps us a lot in recruiting it, is that we're, we're really working on that core mission. We also, our law firm also is, is really, uh, has a commitment to transparency. And so like all the numbers in our law firm we share, there's a, our pay system is really democratic. So people can act, associates can make more than partners if they produce in a really excellent way. Mm -hmm. And so by sort of building a lot of great things into our culture, it really helps us a lot when we go to hire people. How did you think and plan out a system that's like that? That's transparent and these numbers. Did you like take a course or was it a book or you just kind of made it up on your own? No, no, I didn't make it up, which is good. <laughs> um, there's a book called The Great Game of Business. And it's actually, it's about a factory that did this. Mm -hmm. But I thought to myself, you know, the, the great thing about legal teams for the most part is that most people on a legal team are super intelligent. They're super motivated. They're, they've done a lot to keep, to take themselves to a really high level educationally. And so I figured that if it could be done at a factory, this sort of self-management method, lawyers could easily do it. And it turned out to be true. Okay. Have you ever met any other firms that do this or if, do you know? Cause it'd be a course that you could teach other people. <laughs> this seems very interesting. <laughs> I'm trying to think, I, you know, I think that there are some partnerships that, that lawyers have where it's, um, you see some partnerships in the law where it's like a very loose affiliation and they sort of like generate cases for each other based on um, some sort of, you know, like adjacent industry where one person wants to litigate, the other person wants to do transactional work yeah, and then create a business law firm and kind of split expenses. Mm -hmm. You see it a little bit there, but I think that that's a little less sort of team oriented than ours. I, I, I really have never actually, most lawyers that I talk to about it, other law firm partners think I'm nuts really. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it works, I, the main thing is you make money and it, things just work. You know, clients are happy, you guys are happy and that's a success right there. Uh, Jared, thanks so much. If people wanted to learn more about you and also the bot, what kind of resources do they have to, to check that out and connect? Yeah, totally. I mean, so we've got a new feature in the bot that I'm super excited about. And I want a ton of people to try it because I want to see a lot of different people going into it. And I'm really kind of hoping, John, that you'll be willing to try it too. And so because we want all these people to come in, we've got this free trial going right now. Um, what's 30 day free trial. And, John and I are working on something for the Immigration Lawyers Toolbox listeners. Hopefully, we'll be able to offer maybe even a little better than that free trial. But right now, at least 30 days free for anybody. Cool. They, go, they can go to – I'm on LinkedIn all the time. Uh, they can find me there. Or they can – we have a website, yotango.bot. You can go to that website and check it out um, and send me a message there. And so – I think that the best way really to prove our technology is to get it into your law firm and, and have it and see if it works for you. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, appreciate it. Definitely check it out. I'll have a link to this kind of stuff 
uh, on the show notes so people could access it. I'm definitely going to have you on just one to discuss what your view on technology is. Probably have a round table with you and uh, Roman and some other people to see what's going on in the field because there's massive changes happening. Uh, you talked about seed funding happening. Uh, there's uh, one or two uh, purchases in the field. I, I just, what's called, uh, Roman posted, uh, Roman Zachenko, that uh, Rapid Visa was purchased by Boundless. Uh, so that's a big move right there. There was another sale that happened behind the scenes. Uh, I was talking to another person. Uh, there's all these things that are happening. What was, that really what was that sale? I'm sorry? What was that sale behind the scenes? I like to hear that. Yeah, Jeez, for real. Awesome. That's a big deal. And you know what? When you do searches online for, for Google Boundless, it just pops up. So if they get that rapid visa audience, it's a very powerful move that they did. And these are non-lawyer. I'm, I'm not too familiar with their dynamics or what they are internally, but I think these are kind of like semi-bot kind of systems, like computer systems that help me out or assistance or something using technology to get the cape going. They think they could probably use the bot system a lot too to kind of uh, bring it, make their systems more efficient. They probably have some sort of systems, probably have like questionnaires and stuff that lead them to the place they need to. But the questionnaires have the same problem that you mentioned, which is you're kind of attacking them for information instead of naturally kind of like guiding them and talking with them. So uh, yeah, this technology is really broad, uh, but I know your specialty is immigration, so you have a focus on that aspect, which is great. Uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen to immigration if President Trump is reelected. <laughs> but it's yeah. as much as they want to shut down the entire system, it, it, you know, it's in, the nature of America includes immigration. So I don't think they'll be able to ever stop it, especially with the numbers of immigrants here. I mean, at the end of the day, people are just not going to let that fly. Uh, but, uh, it's, it's, it's a fascinating field to be in and you got to be prepared for these changes. So I'm glad you came to talk to people because eventually this is going to be standard what you're doing right here. It's like, if you don't have a bot, it's like not having a phone number kind of thing. That's what the next five years is going to look like. I think, you know, there's this thing that I don't know if you saw when DACA came out in like mid July for that moment, they said that they were, they had to accept new DACA applications. Yeah. And that for us was sort of like a bellwether that tested out this hypothesis that we have. And what it is, is that in immigration, you can have like a news event and that can make 100,000 to 10 million people instantly be like, do I qualify? Yeah. And guess what? I mean, it's, it's rational the way they're coming from, but they all want to know the answer to their question when, John, like right now. Yeah. And there's only 20,000 immigration attorneys. So like when 10 million people, when immigration reform passes, when 10 million people say, hey, I need to know from 20,000 immigration attorneys that we're gonna need solutions that actually allow us to sort of scale ourselves yeah. so that our firms can handle that number of customers. So in that DACA weekend, when it recently happened, we actually, we qualified 1,000 people for DACA over the weekend in the bots. And that for us was just a little test that showed us that immigration attorneys really need to get ready for these sort of big wave type moments mm -hmm. and have their firms built to be able to, to help those high numbers of people that come in in one turn. And you know, these spikes that happen, I, I, I follow the analytics of these keywords and stuff. Essentially, the Trump administration, every 30 days, usually by the end of the month, there's some decision he makes which spikes things up. So it yeah. could be COVID-19 bans for various countries, um, it could be student visa issues. The student visa problem, I, I get those when they do something on that. When they had that ice man when that came out, bam, I had all these universities and students calling me. Um, I had one today where, where the airline's not letting uh, them board in the UK, even though the State Department said F1 students are an exception to the UK travel ban. And so, uh, you know, instead of having me an email, I'd say I'll go to this bot, have it prepared that says, okay, you're, from, you're having a stop in the UK or you're from the UK or from China, Iran, Brazil. It'll give you a pop-up answer so it can answer that. Um, so they have that quickly ready. So it's a good system. Uh, it just, you know, the thing about immigrant lawyers in general is new stuff is really hard to do. And as much as I'm in technology, it, it really like, like yesterday I was starting doing Facebook ads. It took me all weekend to figure out how to do one. And there's still a bunch of errors in it. But I'm like, okay, like, I remember, like, I wanted to, like, hit my head against the wall trying to figure out how the Facebook, how the pixel works. And I kept having an issue with that. And it's just excruciating for, for most lawyers, it seems, as myself included, to do this stuff. I just always have to force myself and say, you got to do it. Because if you don't, you're going to go extinct. So you got to either, uh, you know, that, 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 that thing they talked about, evolution. Uh, Darwin said, you know, uh, the, the fittest survive, the strongest survive. That's not a correct quote. It's really the most adaptable survives. And mm -hmm. this is really about adaptability. In the five years from now, everything's going to be different. Um, just like marketing right now is so different than what it was 20 years ago. And, and, the, and who gets the clients, who doesn't. So 
Uh, it's a fascinating field. I know we've talked and, and you definitely want to get started. I'm just, I have a lot of things going on and like, I want to wrap my head around this and how to best deal with it is like a whole thing. But I, I really do support your work. And I think it's something that I wanted to get out there for people. We don't have any financial relationships or anything like that right now. So it's like, it just, I wanted our listeners to know that this exists and it helps streamline your practice so that it could benefit you. And my goal is always to benefit the practice area and attorneys. I might see myself as more of an advocate for other immigration lawyers than anything else. And I really appreciate you coming on and talking about that and having that 30 day trial that you mentioned. Well, I love it. I love your podcast. I think that, you know, you're one of the few podcasts that's really dedicated to this super niche topic <laughs> and the fact that you're willing to make this for people like us. It's just a big, big uh, addition that you give to the industry. And so I really appreciate it. I love your show. I'm super lucky that I got to be on it. So thanks for having me on today, John. You guys, Jerry, it's a pleasure. Stay on the line. We'll talk a little bit, but uh, yeah. I'll have the, your contact in the, in the show notes for everyone else again. Thanks again. I hope you enjoyed this short clip from the material of the Immigration Lawyers Toolbox. If you want to get more information about becoming a premium member, just email me at info at immigrationlawyerstoolbox.com or visit the site immigrationlawyerstoolbox.com where you'll see links to a lot of the information that we have for premium members to get a better idea of what's there, as well as on the YouTube page for the Immigration Lawyers Toolbox. We have much more clips and material that's helpful. If you wanted to buy something a la carte, visit ilt.thinkific.com.